so we need simplification. Internal Revenue Code, subsection 341E, first sentence is 479 words long. <laughs> 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 that's almost that's three pages or so. Well, that's a very good thing. Well, Indeed, for the last couple of years, the trade deficits have been so large that the interest and dividends were not enough. And in order to pay for the amount that we bought from abroad, we had to borrow from abroad or practically let them. <laughs> Reviewed a defense program 
we all have, and I over here, and I continue to believe it reflects what is required to rebuild our defenses in a useful time frame, and I don't feel that it's inconsistent with the positions on which I was elected or the Republican uh, platform adopted at the convention. I know there's great disagreement on the matter, but we've modified our program several times already, and we won't be able to maintain priority readiness and modernization initiatives uh, if a large reduction is targeted this year. And your committee led the move to fund these initiatives. But to cut back and stretch out programs now, I think, would be inefficient and wasteful. And more to the point, we would never get the capability that we need and that toward which we're striving. A strong defensive capability for the country has always been an issue around which Republicans could rally and show a united and committed front. And I'm going to turn to Cap in just a second for some more words on this. Then we have a discussion, and I want to hear your counsel and advice. But I also want to urge you to support our efforts to sustain our rebuilding program and to demonstrate that we are committed to the requirements of national defense. And I hope that we can once again present a united front that we have most of the issues in the last two years that have brought us as far as we are. I don't know whether Stephen Donovan Regan's announcement or not, but the largest bank in South Carolina today just cut the prime rate to 10, from 10 and a half. So uh, it's just a hint of the fact that we must have been doing a few things right in these last two years. So now, yeah, Fisher. Well, I'm going to be happy to say a few words to them. I hope I didn't interrupt your remarks because I know they'd be fine remarks. Well, okay. I guess I'm on now. All right. Listen, last spring in the Rose Garden, it was my great honor to announce the creation of a public commission with a 12-month mandate to combat the drunk driving problem in our country. And this commission, chaired by former Secretary of Transportation, John Volpe, has performed a valuable and highly effective public service in the interest of greater highway safety. Responding to the outcry of individual citizens and private organizations, the commission has worked zealously with many of you, with state and local governments, to bring drunk driving under control. And I understand that you, Elizabeth, and John Volpe are in Denver today reporting to that joint conference of federal, state, and concerned private sector representatives on the Commission's progress and recommendations, so I won't take the time to enumerate those accomplishments. Let me say only that I'm very proud of the work which has been done and look forward to greater progress. And right now, on my desk before me, is an executive order that will extend the Commission to December 31st, 1983. We haven't yet cured the problem, but together we've prescribed some effective legislative medicine. In the true American fashion, your pleas have been heard and heeded. And through a concerted, coordinated national effort, the threat of the alcohol-impaired driver on our highways is being reduced. With the full and continued support of each of you and many other concerned Americans, more of those who travel our highways will enjoy safer and longer lives. And I want to thank all of you for what you've done and I am now going to take pen in hand and sign that proclamation or that executive order uh, which will extend the life of the commission so that it can continue to do the fine work that it has been doing. Elizabeth, I think that's all I have to say and uh, I can say hello since you're out there in Colorado. I can say an hello from uh, uh, your fine senator, Bill Armstrong, and go back into the meeting that uh, I'm having with him and some of the other senators right now. Yes.
Well, thank you, Elizabeth. And right now, while you were talking and I was listening and holding the phone with one hand with my right hand, I have just signed the executive order. Okay. And God bless all of you. Very good. Let's go back in and do okay. that. <laughs> Tony Van der Graaff of Holland. Jack and Robert for London, the Venice of Venezuela. Nobel Kauksalam of Paraguay. Jerry Ellis of Australia. Mama Ducone of the Ivory Coast. Abdul Hamid Ego of Malaysia. Dr. Antal Yanesh. Uh, Laila Karapeboka of Indonesia, Lilia Bautista of the Philippines, and Dr. Antonio Fernandez of Portugal, George Cao of Taiwan, Oliver Chan, Brian Patterson of Ireland, Hedy Nawali of Tunisia, Boris Ramirez of Panama, Dr. Kusuma of Thailand, Francois Proust of France, uh, Dr. Ahmed of Sudan, uh, Mrs. Dora Bantu, of Tanzania, Yan Tayyip Hassan of Pakistan, and Mahmoud Saada of Egypt. And behind you, sir. And sorry, <coughs> and we got George Bergales of Greece, Mr. Hernan Vallejo, Vallejo of Colombia, Mr. Jaff of Shikawi of Morocco, and Mr. Kazimir Gozen of Belgium. Well, I, and spouses. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I'm pleased to have it. That's one of the countries, and I haven't visited yet, but I would like to go to I have had the good fortune to be to a number of your countries, and I want <clears throat> some still to go. I try to get there. But I uh, welcome you all and your families, husbands and wives, and so forth that were with you. The 1983 Eisenhower Fellows. We welcome you not only to the White House, but to the United States. We're so pleased to have you here. But Eisenhower Fellow, each one of you has been selected for the leadership role that you've demonstrated in your own country. And I hope that your time in the United States is positive, educational, and is an experience that will contribute to that role of leadership. We're in a very real sense citizen diplomats. You will find, if you haven't already, that Americans are anxious to assist you in learning about America. And you will also find that Americans will want to learn about your nations, your pro problems, and your views on the world, including the perceptions of the nations and America's role in the world. President Eisenhower was very fond of saying that the fellowship program created in his name represented the finest most enduring and most gratifying birthday present of his lifetime. His faith can be very simply stated that <clears throat> hatred rarely survives sustained contact between people. I've had another way of saying it myself. But a lot of the problems in the world would disappear if more people talk to each other instead of about each other. And you'll likely travel different paths when you leave Washington, but you'll always share this experience of contact between people, and I'm sure that we'll all be richer for the experience. And again, I want to welcome you here and wish you well. A room full of people like this is such an indication that more people could only sit down together. We wouldn't have the concerns and the worries about conflict and war, because people don't start wars, governments do. We've got, we have to do something about that. But, uh, I'm delighted to see you here. I know that I have to excuse myself, to, uh, and I thank you very much for this, for your presence. But I have a. I mean, all present for you. I mean, it's not too physical. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd like to give you a list of what some of our former Eisenhower fellows are doing around the world today. Well, Minister of Health, Minister of Labor and Social Affairs, former President, Minister of Finance, Minister of Relations with the Economic Committee, Minister of Housing, Public Health, Minister of Education, Deputy Ruler, Minister of Say, listen, this is, that's quite an alumni record to live up to. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I didn't catch it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I mean, I, I have to take just one second and tell you about a hard <coughs> experience that I'm going to now. Um, recently, there was a television program in our country, and it was on a subject that is very much in our minds here right now, and that is the sacredness of human life, particularly of newborn babies who seem to be born with born less than perfect and whether to keep them alive or not. And in connection with that, there was one family that was shown on television that did believe that it was worth keeping them alive. And I was so taken with what I saw that I called them on the phone. And they are now here in the White House to meet with me. The mother and father, he'd been one of our Air Force officers, he retired from the Air Force. He and his wife, Hearing about and seeing examples of babies that someone thought should not uh, be allowed to continue life because of their disabilities. And they and about 14 of those, which they have adopted, the most grievously handicapped from birth defects on, including one little child that I don't know the technical name for it, but is born with just a, a brain stem and no brain so can neither see, nor talk, nor think, nor hear, and yet is so capable of responding with joy to loving attention, and can is so loving. And uh, that whole family, all of them, are here in the White House, and I'm going to meet with them. And I've seen and saw on television all of them together, and you have never seen happier people and I mean the children themselves, uh, with every kind of disability that you could think of, and yet so happy and so loving to each other. And it's just a sample of what two people that decided there was something they could do for their fellow man set out to do. And uh, I've been looking forward to the visit for, uh, for quite some time. But I just thought you might want to hear about that and know about it some of our people are doing. And uh, I don't think there's anything nicer than people. <laughs> but uh, thank you all again for being here. I wish you well and I, I just uh, hope that you enjoy your experience here with our fellow citizens. And I know they'll enjoy all of you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.